Hello everyone and welcome to Sweden, a country freshly bestowed with the glorious honor of a first female prime minister. Yeah. Could have fooled me. No, 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 no. For, for real this time. It's for real now. I see, for a while there, the other week, Sweden became an international meme. Again. This time for having their first female prime minister resign eight hours after she gained her post. Now, I'm not sure if everyone followed what happened here and why, but long story short, she resigned since the Green Party left government. And this fringe extremist party is what the larger social democrats relied on to stay in power. This gave them the few percentages extra they needed to be able to go, aha, we got more votes than you guys. But now that wasn't so sure anymore, so a small existential crisis unfolded, and a little bureaucracy later, and there's a new vote, allowing her to become prime minister again, with the full support of, among other things, the Green Party. So what was the point of all this then, might you wonder? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! The only reason the Green Party left their collaboration team is because a budget was pushed through by the right-wing coalition where the Nationalist Party, the Sweden Democrats, participated, and somehow that's worth protesting. Uh, that mere fact alone. Uh, by doing this silent treatment, female stereotype, big show of nothing, before you ultimately settle down and reside right by the cock you were pushing for the whole time. And this was just a typical bureaucrat showroom waste of time that cost everyone a lot of misguided tax money because they could have just done what they needed and wanted to do right away, without extra meetings. Headlines like these really just go to show what a bureaucracy culture Sweden is. And I'm not just saying that because every other person in this country is a literal ned. It's not just the fact that everything institution related takes pointlessly long forever to process and has to go through completely completely inane, unwarranted stages of reassessment, renegotiation, head up into your ass and aimed at the sky, eager need for verification. It is also the fact that the very people seem to get off to it all, and believe this makes them better than every other country. Case in point, here's a completely unrelated, yet completely related testimony. Quote, I've worked a lot with Swedes. Nice people in many ways. But try to get a Swede to make a quick and individual decision that affects a whole group is totally fucking impossible. There needs to be negotiations and negotiations and nobody dares make a decision that might be questioned afterwards. Rather, they would instead just let the accident happen first and then group blame someone else. End of quote. Um... Yeah, I can't believe how well this guy summarized the Swedish mentality, and especially in Parliament. But also just culture, as you can see on the screen here. This is what having a feminine culture entails, according to Geert Hofstedt. Basically, Swedishness is when you think that your pedantry in all social avenues qualifies as a superior master race system. Swedes act like their democracy is so superior and corruption free to every other country, while they describe America as a third world shithole that's super corrupt because Donald Trump was in office thanks to Russia. <laughs> But let's not act like America is the only place that's insane sometimes. Check out the reason why Sweden now has its first female prime minister. The Social Democrats approached a Kurdistan-born politician from the left party, who is also considered an independent in parliament, and promised her they would work harder to build connections with the Kurdish Communist Party, who are close to the PKK, a militia that's been described as terrorist by the US, Canada, and the European Union. And that is why Sweden has a new female prime minister. Because they have to make deals which are completely irrelevant to Sweden, and in fact take place on issues outside of Sweden. Isn't this a strange way to decide the fate of a country? To base Swedish future prime ministers on what political stances you take in Turkey and Iran? 
This deal is basically what bought the Social Democrats the decisive vote to have this pensioner-hating liar as Sweden's first female prime minister. This along with the fact that a center-right politician went against her party, folded last second, and voted to abstain, which is the same as voting yes in practice. So, 173 parliament members voted no, 75 abstained, which equals passive support, and 101 members said yes. So this is just a very roundabout way of saying that a majority supported this decision, which barely passed with a very thin margin. Supported is an interesting word in the context, because voting to abstain is basically like saying no thanks at a party when someone offers you a drink and then chugging a bottle of vodka. Voting to abstain is like a nun with an OnlyFans account. And then a racist storm hit Sweden as the media whipped up this moral frenzy because Nationalist Party leader Jimmy Okeson referred to the only Kurd in Parliament as a Kurd when he said, quote, It's truly strange that it's up to a Kurdish communist to decide this issue. This isn't the way it's supposed to go down. Kurdish communists shouldn't be the ones deciding who Sweden's prime minister is. Naturally, it should be the Swedish people. End of quote. And then this happened. Can you, can you tell what Swede priorities are yet? Everyone lost their minds because he used the objectively correct phrase she always uses about herself, namely a Kurdish communist. Yuck, what a disgusting way to talk about Kakababa as the Kurd. And when people pointed out it's absurd that this media editor thinks it's gross to call a Kurd a Kurd, and that it sounds like she thinks it's worse to be Kurdish than communist, she bimbo clarifies, not that there's anything wrong with being Kurdish, of course, but it sounds like her ethnicity makes her voice less worth. No, bitch, nobody said that. No matter how you twist it and turn it, Orkison's statement about her is incredibly severe. The way Orkison talks about the Kurd Kakababa makes me remember when the nationalist guys in high school called me the Turk Amanda. Now those guys have a political party and their view of people is getting influence over our politics. I will never get used to this. Once again, happily fucking ignore the word communist here, and act like this isn't why people hate the media. Orkison yapping about the Kurd Kakabave clearly demonstrates that according to SD, you're only Swedish if you're an immigrant agreeing with them, and you become an immigrant first when you disagree with them. I see someone has studied logic. Oh, the classic. When we don't appease nationalists, all of a sudden we're the Kurd. Okeson should read her book. Young Kurds are forced to war for a reason, like when they fight the terror sect ISIS. Okay, well, good job there, but boy, you did an even better job taking things out of context. So Yimi Okeson is calling Kakabave a Kurdish communist? You fucking slime bag! That's all she does, though! Every time she opens her mouth in Parliament, she calls herself that. It's how she describes herself, and one of her political missions to fight for her people. I mean, what Swedes have done here is basically turn mere ethnicity into the N-word. That's what they're acting like here. It's not even, what do you mean, you people? It's more like, what do you mean, my people, that only exist when I talk about them, but when I don't, I'm a cosmopolitan world citizen slash part of your people, okay? So why don't you include me into your ethnic identity, because we're the same, and yet not. And then the Kurd herself called the Sweden Democrats racist, yada yada yada, business as usual, business as usual. The point is that Pakistan, Senegal, and Bangladesh all had female prime ministers far before Sweden. It didn't necessarily make them better places for women. Uh, the fact that Iran has a female vice president shows you the feminist idea of gender representation is complete horseshit. It's essentially like believing in magic, which is probably why feminists tried putting a hex on Donald Trump. And just as per the usual formula, Sweden that likes to brag about having the first official feminist government in human history neglect to inform you that rapes have increased by 41% during the first six years under this feminist government. 
Don't even get me started on all the other crime statistics. You can make a whole video on that. Wait, oops, I've already done numerous times. This is cause and effect in a nutshell right here. This is why anyone who cares about equality hesitates to call themselves a feminist. So sadly, I don't think more political vapidness is gonna fix any of our problems. All I know is Sweden has its first female prime minister. And it's not because there was a particularly strong push for it amongst the people. It's because a dying social democracy that's kept alive through artificial life support had to come up with one last magic trick before the election. And the only reason it worked is thanks to a Kurdish communist party. So now the left gets to go, if you're voting for the right, then you're voting against women for a whole year until the election. It's funny that a predecessor country, as they like to see themselves, basically just took Hillary Clinton's desperate shtick when she was running against Trump. Your gender doesn't matter enough to cover up all the corrupt, misanthropic scandals you've been in, okay? But oh well. If deals with foreign elements is how Swedish domestic politics is handled now, do we really need too much imagination to figure out how it's gonna be handled in the future? when Swedes become a minority in their own country in just two decades? I'm just curious. I'm just asking questions. Let me know what you think in the comments. And before you complain, sources are linked in the video description. Thank you for watching this far, and a big thanks to everyone supporting my channel. You are the number one reason I can keep doing this and have been able to do this for so many years. And given the current climate, your support is more important now than ever before. So make sure you sign up for my newsletter, as YouTube notifications don't work properly anymore. All links and information can be found in the video description, just check there, and I'll see you again next week. Sincerely, your friendly neighborhood foreigner.